There's something tremendously compelling about watching world-class talent reenact major moments in human history, whether they're playing gangsters, popes, or queens. And thanks to Netflix, many of those very stories are available at the push of a button. Historical biopics are often all lumped into the same tonal category, and when we think of the genre, we often think of very ornate, slightly stuffy costume dramas with elaborate recreations of famous faces. Done right though, biopics can be the stuff of legend, and that's exactly what you get when you take some time to watch Ip Man. The man of the title is a legendary Chinese martial artist best known in the West as a guy who trained Bruce Lee in Wing Chun Kung Fu. The film follows Ip in the 1930s, during the Sino-Japanese War, as he attempts to keep himself alive so he can protect his friends and feed his family while facing Japanese oppression. Donnie Yen is graceful, captivating, and brilliant in the title role, playing Ip as a man determined to contain his own martial energy until the last possible moment both for the sake of saving his own strength and the safety of those around him. When he finally does explode into pure martial arts might, it's absolutely dazzling. There's a reason Yen has since come back to star in three more Ip Man movies, and it all starts right here. In 2002, a writer named Julie Powell set out to cook every recipe and mastering the art of French cooking over the course of a year. While writing a blog about her experience, the blog became a sensation, and within a few years, Powell was a best-selling author and her book was optioned for film. A film based on a cooking blog seems like a questionable proposition, but that's where the great Nora Ephron comes in. In Ephron's hands, Julie and Julia becomes a merger of two stories, intercutting Powell's life experience while starting and writing a blog with Julia Child's experiences in post-war France that led her to become a chef, author, and TV presenter. Perfect. Mm, and even if it isn't, never apologize. No excuses, no explanations. By intertwining the stories, Efron makes Julie and Julia not just a celebration of food, but a story of two women who somehow find a way to save themselves from listless lives through the sense of purpose that food culture gives them. Amy Adams and Meryl Streep are both tremendous in their respective title roles, and the film is easily Efron's greatest visual triumph. Sometimes the best approach for a biopic is a comprehensive look at the life of the person in question, making one film that spans decades. At the times, a more focused approach is called for, drilling into a single important event in a search for meaning, humanity, and entertainment. The end of the tour takes the latter approach, and it's an extremely rewarding decision. The film centers on David Lipsky, a Rolling Stone writer who spent several days with novelist David Foster Wallace in 1996 as the latter was finishing up his Infinite Jest tour. The two men travel together, talking about everything from the virtues of junk food to addiction to mental illness. Feeling as though every axiom in your life turned out to be false, and there was actually nothing. And you were nothing. Through his relatively narrow lens, we get a compelling picture of Wallace as a person and as a creator, without ever elevating him to mythic status. The end of the tour is a beautifully crafted little road movie, and stars Jesse Eisenberg and Jason Segel are working at the top of their game. The problem with making a movie that's about the making of another movie is that fans of the original film are always going to react with skepticism. Sure, your making of fictionalization might be interesting, but can it ever possibly be as interesting as a film you already know and love? But hey, man, I put on a girdle. What I got to do? Come on, brother. They waiting on Dolomite movie. Let's bring Dolomite to the screen. Fortunately for everyone, Dolomite is my name does not suffer from this problem, despite the tremendous entertainment value that Dolomite still holds decades after its release. Craig Buer's film follows Rudy Ray Moore, a struggling comedian who finds success with a stage persona he borrowed from a homeless man. Armed with new material and a new sense of confidence, Moore decides that his character, Dolomite, deserves his own movie. When conventional means of filmmaking and financing fail him, he makes the film himself. What follows is a wonderfully effective comedy that's also a heartwarming story of determination, confidence, and speaking your dreams out into the world. It's also the best work Eddie Murphy's done in years. If you only know Martin Scorsese as a gangster movie guy, it might seem a little excessive of him to make yet another crime drama this late in his career, especially one that runs over three hours and makes heavy use of digital de-aging technology to keep several of his favorite actors in the whole thing. But there are two things wrong with that. For one, Scorsese is and always has been more than just a gangster filmmaker. And for another, The Irishman is really, really good. What's that about? 
Based on the book I Heard You Paint Houses, the film tells the story of Frank Sheeran, a low-level criminal who rises through the ranks of the American mob to such a degree that he develops a friendship with infamous union leader Jimmy Hoffa, and ultimately plays a part in Hoffa's disappearance. The film follows Sheeran's rise through several decades with all the visual dynamism and emotional complexity we've come to expect from Scorsese. And by the end, it's a kind of epic summation of everything he has to say about crime, sin, redemption, and more. It's a long journey, but it's worth it. When a film or television series has a budget to swing it, the Vatican is a perfect place to stage a cinematic story, which helps explain the allure of recent efforts like The Young Pope. It's a visually gorgeous backdrop, but the headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church also offers a sense of deep intrigue that we can project all manner of mysteries on, be they mysteries of faith or mysteries of pure human frailty. Add in a true story and two brilliant actors playing off each other, and you've got a can't-miss movie. The Two Popes is a fictionalized account of the meeting between the two most recent pontiffs of the church, Benedict XVI and Francis, when the former was a flagging pope on his way out and the latter was a cardinal considering retirement. Their meeting seems fated, but the consequences of their conversation will shake both of them as the church attempts to weather one of the most tumultuous storms in its recent history. Anthony Hopkins and Jonathan Price both received Oscar nominations for their work in the film, and when you watch it, you can see why. They're perfectly matched, both doing some of the best work of their careers. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.